All right, folks, how you doing? Steve the Car Guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in this Zurich ODB2 code reader into my 2002 Pontiac Grand Am GT. Hopefully you can see that right there. And then it'll go ahead and tell us what the deal is. I got the check engine light on in the car. I already know what the deal is. It's oxygen sensor is the one down below. I replaced it about a year and a half. And somehow it's either the wiring gone bad or something else. But I wanted to show you guys this. And so basically it says I have... O2 circuit low voltage bank one sensor two severity two of three driver immediately repair immediately drivability issues blah 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 and it also does what the Zurich does is it gives you the uh, monitor status as you can see we have the EGR we have the oxygen sensor we have the catalytic converter and all those different things so right now the EVAP the cat and the heater are in the red status. They're in red status because I went ahead and reset everything because I see the code coming up on the dash, which you can clearly see right there. <clears throat> My high mileage vehicle, all of 91,000 miles, right? For 2002, it's pretty, uh, pretty incredibly low. And um, basically, you know, you can go ahead and you can press the down arrow key again. Same thing, one of one stored, severity two of three. Now, what I could, it's a freeze frame, which means, see the CFS says freeze frame, it means it's been stored in there. I could go ahead and clear this, but if I do clear this, the MIS, the FUE, CCM, um, O2, and EGR, which are now green, I'd have to go through all those uh, GM driving cycles again. That's why they are red right now, because I've gone ahead and uh, tripped this code a couple of times, trying to, uh, you know, get rid of it and see if it comes back. This is actually about the fourth time that this code has come back. So when you see this, um, it says Bank 1, Sensor 2, people. Bank 1, Sensor 2 is going to be the one downstream, which is to be the one underneath the car by the exhaust. I replaced that about a year and a half, two years ago. It went bad, and it was kind of a bear to get the thing out of there. This one will probably be a lot easier now because I've had to, uh, you know, the original one I had to use a torch and heat it all up and everything. It had been on there for 15 to 17 years. This one's only been on there for less than two years. I'm surprised it went bad. So that'll be another video that I'll show you guys how to replace that oxygen sensor, uh, bank one, sensor two. That's going to be underneath the car. So look for, look for, look uh, look here on this channel for that video. So what I'm trying to do for you guys is I'm trying to give you a little bit of, a, of an idea of what it takes to go ahead and do this. You have a code reader and it tells you this. And I said this code reader was at Harbor Freight for about a hundred, little bit less than $100. Uh, it's bank one, sensor two, which is going to mean, like I said, this, this is the oxygen sensor that's downstream as opposed to the oxygen sensor that's upstream, which would be on top of the car <clears throat> by the exhaust manifold. <clears throat> so I have gone ahead and, um, you know, did replace this about a year and a half ago, but uh, almost two years ago now, but apparently it's going out again or a wire is bad. So that'll be the next video I'll, I'll show you guys. I'll actually show you how to replace of this particular oxygen sensor. So, you know, at least we have some idea of, of what's going on here, and you can see the status of the lights. And once I go ahead and replace the oxygen sensor, um, I'll probably go ahead and clear this out, and then the freeze frame data, and along with the other one, will be gone, and then we'll go ahead and um, we'll, we'll be all set. I did